jungle and drum and bass. For some, it's a style of music. For others, it's a way of life. Regardless of your definition, the impact of this musical genre on our modern culture is undeniable. The roots of drum and bass, as I understand it, came from UK guys that loved what the US was doing in hip hop, but they were techno or house producers. This futuristic genre of electronic music found its way into the hearts of people in North America during the early 90s. Mixtapes of UK pirate radio stations and techno enthusiasts pushed jungle and drum and bass across the continent and around the globe. Heavy bass lines and highly syncopated drums are a signature of jungle and drum and bass, and they carry the rhythm at an energetic and fast pace. So they were looping up drums, hip hop drums, and speeding them up to, you know, back then it was 120, 30, 140, and playing techno sounds, which was a UK thing, and putting that two cultures together. Intelligent, scientific audio engineering helped paint an eclectic landscape of sounds on a futuristic breakbeat drumline background. You see in the American jungle, you can hear the pain in our war cry Until we see the barriers crumble We will see the stars and stripes turn black and white fight In the American jungle You can find the heart of a soldier Fight in the battle of the humble With only the beliefs of a culture You see in the American jungle You can hear the pain in our war cry Until we see the barriers crumble so that is what drum and bass is. True. That is what it is. We're the future, man. Straight up. Inside this futuristic music genre called jungle and drum and bass is a culture. A culture and attitude embraced by the North American junglers since its inception out of the UK rave scene. Our music is futuristic. Look, my, you know, Kids from the year 2216 to be using, listening to this stuff mm -hmm. because it's not formatted for us right now. Brains can't comprehend these beats that we're providing right now. The junglist culture in North America is a diverse and thriving community drawn by the appeal of jungle and drum and bass. I think because drum and bass jungle music does stand kind of in its own tempo, it, you know, like dubstep, you know, garage, you know, there's a kind of 140 tempo that you can kind of gel different things with. Drum and bass doesn't really mix, not that you can't play it alongside, but you can't mix much other styles of music into it, really. Not that it's impossible, but it stands alone more, so it's good and bad. You know, the downside is it doesn't get so much commercial success, but for me personally, I've never looked for that. How I would describe drum and bass to someone who doesn't really uh, know a lot about it. Yeah, you know, it's funny because you do meet people on like an airplane or something and they're asking where you're going and you tell them, oh, I play uh, techno, you know, just because it's like maybe the term that they'll understand and then and then you gotta stop and uh, try and break it down to them a little bit, explain like, alright, the stuff I play is like a cross between like really fast, uh, you know, techno music with like slower kind of reggae bass lines to it maybe, you know, I mean that's like the, it's like the only way you can even kind of explain it. It's just so complex, it's to someone who doesn't understand it, it's almost impossible to just explain it to them simply. Quick and constant hi-hat patterns and a lot of changes, a lot of uh, switch-ups, and uh, it could go anywhere from there. I mean, vocals, uh, samples, amens, but uh, you know, the basis of it would be a, a breakbeat style tune 
double time to hip hop baseline emphasis. There's so many influences in the sound, and when you go back to where the original innovators of this music were sampling from, I mean, you hear those elements in it, the jazz, the funk, the soul, and I think that is what really separates us as a genre from other styles that were primarily born, you know, I would say out of computer-based music, that old drum machines, you know, synthesizer stuff. Everything, man. It's fucking yeah, everything. Everything. Hip-hop, man, punk, fucking heavy metal even, yeah. funk, even jazz. Oh man, it's fucking psycho cut. Drum and bass is a melting pot of music appropriately being celebrated in a country labeled the melting pot of the world. It's really hard to say. I mean, the stuff that I like tend to be influenced by metal or hip hop or techno. Those are comprised of the three main things that influence the type of stuff that I used to play and still do play. The thing about, about jungle music back then is you could sample anything and make it sound good and current. I think. I think that was a lot of the draw for a lot of people. It was like they'd hear the influence of the music that they maybe grew up listening to. I think it was just because it was faster. People danced better to it. And once I started to actually know the difference, I just really was attracted to the bass. more bass and it just had a vibe to it that was better like house was like slow and shuffly and you couldn't do all these crazy moves to it because you just looked really stupid but drum and bass was made for you to spaz out to it. I guess I'm kind of a spastic person so I was just naturally attracted to it. It's <laughs> I think it's, yeah, it's hard to describe the emotion, any sort of emotion, but intellectually what appealed to me about it was that it was a really a collage music. Even more than hip hop, it was music that took from every other music and sort of used it and combined it. And one of the things I thought was really good about Jungle in the beginning, and I think got sort of lost for a while, but it's being rekindled, is the fact that you can take everything and make it work. Because Jungle originally wasn't about a certain tempo. There's no sort of template. It has to be 170 beats. It has to be 180 beats. It can't be any lower than 160 beats. It was, take the music. You have a bass. You have a break beat. Make it work. It really didn't have any boundaries of the types of music it would sample or the types of music it was influenced by. I would hear reggae samples, rock samples, hip hop samples. And so it was this mishmash, but a cohesive mishmash, like in a good way, of a bunch of different styles of music that I, I liked and I liked the way they sounded together. Grammy bass, that's what drew me to it, was the sounds, the synths. It wasn't so much the beats, because I've heard hard beats. I really dug Breaks. Breaks was funky. It really kind of excited more of the b-boy in me, where, you know, it still fell along with the hip-hop motive. And then I heard drum and bass and I was like, man, they're bringing together all of the elements of all of the music that I enjoyed. It's the natural aggression of drum and bass. It's, uh, it's obviously, it's the faster tempo. You can also have, you know, a giant spectrum of emotions. You can go from 
having classic tunes and you know chill vibes like LTJ Bookham to go in just the absolute bonkers, balls to the wall, evil intent, gein, all that stuff. I mean, I'd really want to say it's the continuing evolution of our most primal musical language. I think for me it was more about like the just like the off time tempo of everything, you know, it's just like a very uh it's like a swanky type of vibe to it, you know? It's nothing like you'd ever heard from anything else. Everything else at the time was like a 4-4 tempo. It was the most unique sound that I was hearing compared to a majority of the rest of the rave music, which is more 4-4 bass. This is the story of the passion and dedication people have for jungle and drum and bass in America and what it takes to keep this creative and artistic music style alive in an industry awash with commercially driven EDM. It was about the breakbeat, how it changed, um, and, and offered more variety and more spontaneity and more excitement. Describing drum and bass to people is kind of like describing colors to someone who's colorblind. You can try to do it, but what they need to do is hear it and experience it for themselves. This is the story of the junglist culture that has thrived in North America, a culture cherished by individuals that have spent their lives enjoying it, people who blatantly ignore the boundaries that are set up by the American pop music industry. This is the American Jungle. So Jungle, once again, was way, was way advanced of, any, of every other musical form. And you know what I mean? Like, I've been doing music, playing drums and piano and everything since I was in third grade. So when I hear music, I hear it in a very, like a scientific way. And for me, pop is unscientific and jungle is pure scientific. So jungle equals scientific. What I think is so special about drum and bass, or at least for me, was the sound design and the sound selection. It was it was just so digital and cutting edge and, and, and bass heavy and complex that uh, it wasn't just dance music, it was listening music. I look at drum and bass jungle as being the most dynamic form of electronic music. And from how it was birthed is how the aesthetic came about. Because like hip hop, hip hop came from taking what was available because there wasn't enough resources to get all the studio equipment like synthesizers to make sound. So out of circumstance and environment, uh, music is an aesthetic to environment and culture. You have people that are seeking uh, sound source material to make music with limited, so you only had six minutes to sample, and so you were forced to have to loop your sounds. So looping breakbeats from old funk records and stuff um, is how the sound came about. And then if you didn't have effects processors, you only had a small mixing board, you can easily turn up the gain to get a distortion or, and then resample that with other layers. And so drum and bass was birthed from that kind of, uh, uh, you know, way of, of producing. That's what I tell, I tell people. People that don't get drum and bass just aren't smart enough in my opinion. Jungle, much like hip hop, originally was a sample based genre. Like the, like the connection with hip hop and jungle was the sampling, was the fact that they were sampling and basically sampling the same things, but instead of looping them, they were chopping them up, reversing them, filtering them, pitching them way down, time stretching. Sampling allows every style of music to be included in jungle and drum and bass. Everything from soulful jazz or hip-hop to punk or heavy metal. 
The use of sampling adds a timeless atmosphere to jungle or drum and bass. Sampling is simply using a part of a song that is edited in order to incorporate it into another song, a practice used heavily by producers making jungle and drum and bass in the roots of the genre. For urban artists creating music on a budget in the late 80s and early 90s, sampling was an effective means for making drum beats. Early hip-hop artists struggling to make it in the industry used all the resources they had to build their sound. This led to sampling. And sampling quickly went to a new level as artists searched for drum beats, horn stabs, and many other sounds for their tracks. But one sample stood out time and time again. The Almond Break. This is the, uh, the Winston's, the Almond Brother tune. Um, this is the record that uh, made drum and bass happen was this one little, this one little break beat right there. It was a sample of six seconds from 1969 that would spawn a fresh urban sound that would catch the ear of generations forever. Well, being that the um, end track came from, a, I think, a band called the Winston's way back in the day that was almost a, you know, a soul type record. The name of a break beat and the name of these beats, like Amen or Amen, Think, Soul Pride, all goes back to the original record that it was originally sampled from. So if you want to talk about where the Amen Brother tune came from, it was by the Winstons, and it was the flip side to a gospel record. And it just so happened to have a three bar loop. So here's an example of what the beat sounds like at its normal speed and the way hip-hop people used it. Here it is. That's it. The Almond Break is a six-second drum solo laid down by prolific drummer Gregory C. Coleman. Coleman was a member of an American funk soul band based out of Washington, D.C., the capital of capitalism. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Early roots of the sample first appeared in American hip-hop classics, such as Straight Outta Compton by N.W.A. Straight Outta Compton. Definitely words of wisdom. Words of Wisdom by Third Base. And Salt and Peppers, I Desire. Wait a minute, I won't talk to him. My rap is not a show for us, it's a parade. But it was the King of Beats by Mantronics that stood out to Jungle Pioneers. King of the Beats is a hip-hop scratch album released in the 80s. This album brought the almond break to the attention of the UK hardcore rave scene. In the late 80s and early 90s, the Almond Break, along with a handful of classic funk and soul drum samples, were sped up and dropped into hardcore straight beat sounds and DJ mixes. The Almond Break and Jungle were meant to be. The sample has been utilized in hundreds if not thousands of jungle and drum and bass tracks. The Almond Break is the cornerstone of jungle and drum and bass sound. Almond Brothers. Breakbeat. That was just that one little part. Let's do it again. And slowly but surely, what happened was, the music got faster and faster, right? And one side of it kept with 4-4, and the other side introduced breakbeats. And for me, a massive influence was like artists like uh, Shut Up and Dance, uh, out of East London. To me, one of the first, one of the first uh, jungle tunes was We Are E by Lenny the Ice. Arguably, some people say We Are E, some people say 28 Gun Bad Boy, but they were the first tunes that had this really reggae-ish vibe, had the break beats, they, had, they were kind of a, a taste of things to come, of where things were going to go. Artists edited, chopped, sliced, looped, and rearranged the break in every way possible, taking the music in a new and unexpected direction.
the drums are great and they're awesome and I, I groove out in the car when I don't have a system still but when you feel that bass and it hits you in the chest and it vibrates your whole soul that's what gets you really understanding the rhythm and what makes people passionate about drum and bass. Drums are only half the arrangement when it comes to drum and bass. You simply can't have one without the other. Most junglists believe they can't appreciate a track properly without feeling the vibration and rumble of the bass. Probably one of the most memorable moments was when uh, me and Circuit opened up at a Nocturnal Wonderland. And there's 1,200 people standing in front of us the floor is still, you know, half empty. There's going to be at least two, 3,000 people in that room. And the bass is so intense that you can feel it coming up through your feet. It literally takes feeling the bass in your chest to fully appreciate the genre. I don't care about the lasers and the lights and the projectors and all that. Just have a heavy system, throw me in the corner and have it sound right. If you listen to it on a Walkman or, you know, people listen to it on their, uh, their laptops, you're just not going to get it. But if you're out, the bass is rumbling your body, people are dancing, the lights, you hear the music kind of goes silent, and then it drops with the bass, and then people go kind of crazy. It becomes like a totally visceral experience where you're experiencing the music. It is debatable if the music industry would be where it is today without the advent of affordable consumer audio equipment in the late 80s and early 1990s. This boils down to quality audio and consumer electronics being available to everyone. As technology advanced in the late 80s, the appetite of the consumers who had found they loved bass grew as well. Finally, people could experience rich bass and music on an everyday basis. Being able to replicate the sonic frequency of what is capable through, you know, the early drum and bass, that, was, that has been kind of the pursuit and at the root of what this company is. Sound systems were in the household, in the car, the studio, in headphones, and even at the local raves. Both jungle and drum and bass are a product of testing the limits of music with every aspect, all genres and all vibes. No matter how low the drop can go, we were here to find out. There's really nothing more important. When, that would always be the first thing that we would always uh, consider when throwing an event. Does this venue have the proper sound system? And if not, can we afford to bring it in? The key component to any jungle and drum and bass event is the sound. If you can't get past that question, the event's over right there. A lot of our bass lines are around 30, 40 hertz. That's where you feel it in your chest. Being able to not only hear, but actually feel the deep, low-end bass is extremely important to the average junglist. The biggest problem with club systems, when you travel a lot, the club system takes out everything below 60 hertz, and so they, they, it's all about the kick drum. Most of the club music is house music, so they're botting them out about 50, 60 hertz with a big, deep bass. That's no good for drum and bass, or, or dubstep, or, or, or any of these things with deep bass lines because the bass line is down there. What happens is you get a lot of distortion because the DJs keep turning it up and then it just sounds bad. But all we're trying to do is get our bass line, but you can never get the bass line because the house graphic equalizer has everything cut off below 60 hertz. At raves and music festivals in America, jungle and drum and bass artists have performed on side stages and in smaller rooms for productions with little or no concern for the acoustics and sound quality. In the early days, drum and bass and jungle, sound was an issue, you know, people had a hard time getting it right. This has prevented performances from achieving the levels of bass intended by the artist in the U.S. I remember going to my first deep, going downstairs, very small, and they had an insane amount of sound for that side room. Bottles were vibrating off of the wall, and that's when I kind of realized, you know what, these are who I want to get, get down with. You have to provide that. It's, a, it's essential. It's part of what people are paying for. It's not just, in my opinion, the, the style of music they're coming to hear. They're coming to, it's a performance. They want to be entertained, and they're expecting the sound to be proper.
was a regular vibe So many spoke of being inside Torn from the matrix to break the cycle Life was hard fought just to take the ride War paid with lies, friends stuck to genres Never get high boxed in, that was our mantra Remarkable, solitude met community Individuals embrace the fight Become accepted, form a resistance Be empathetic, but never dismiss The fact we were united by failure To understand true success, never forget American 